Welcome to the Trailblazer FM podcast. This is your host, Lee. And on today's show, we have the one, the only, back again for the umpteenth time. It's Mr. Kyle Van Dusen of Admin Bar fame. Kyle, mate, how are you doing? I am awesome. It's always uh, excellent to come talk to you, Lee. I'm so excited to be be here back again, I think, for the third time, which is, uh, I, don't, I don't know how many people have done it more than three times now, but I want to be at the top of that list. Okay. It's like hosting SNL, you know? I think I you're get competing some kind of with... At some point. Candy and Pete Everett. So at the moment, I think Candy's been on five times. Okay. Yeah. But she did Fair. a whole season with me. So that's kind of cheating, I guess. You could class that as one. But anyway, mate, thanks so much for, for coming on the show. We are longtime friends. In fact, our first episode, like you said, was like six or seven years ago. So we've known each other since we were little children. But for those who don't know you, mate, could you just give us a little bit of a quick bio and maybe even something that people may not know about you? All right, so uh, Kyle Van Dusen, I run an agency called uh, Ogle Web Design. I started that back in like 2017 when I got sick of my full-time job. I had worked as a graphic designer for about 15 years before that. Uh, launched my agency with uh, completely naive to what would happen next, but it ended up working out, thankfully, uh, to people like Lee, who coached me through tons of that getting started and getting it off the ground. Uh, about a year later, I started a community called The Admin Bar, and we've grown that to a little over 7,000 people at this point. It's been voted the number one WordPress community twice, two years in a row now. Uh, so definitely proud of that fact. And it's just a great place for people to come hang out, you know, freelancers, agency owners, all that, people who are involved in the WordPress space to ask questions and get help and not be so lonely working in your basement like I do. And folks, there is a link, by the way, to the admin bar community. Can I highly recommend that you go ahead and check that out? I, for one, know how hard it is to run a Facebook community, and you'll all be aware I eventually took the big decision to close mine when we got to about 4K because I was just exhausted. Whereas uh, the young gun here, Kyle, has way more energy and has got a really vibrant community. It's something that I've really missed. Um, so if you're not part of a community of other designers and developers, I highly recommend you go and join the admin bar. There will be a link in the description of this YouTube video if you're watching on YouTube and also in the show notes if you are on the podcast. Don't do agency life alone. Many years ago, I was um, just behind me at that table crying. I had no friends. I was running an agency. I had horrible clients who were bullying me. I looked like I was about to lose my home and my business and I had nobody to talk to. So being a member of something like the admin bar is something I highly recommend. And Kyle is a freaking legend. So knowing you've got Kyle as your wingman, boom. You can cut that out of this podcast, mate. And that's a really good, yeah. um, really good. I'm uh, done here. Yeah. I, that could, you put that on your website, I hope. <laughs> I got the testimonial I came for. There you go. Right, well, now you've got to give us some value for that, mate. Okay, um, fair. Now, you launched the website owner's manual quite a while ago now, and I just remember it went super crazy. Everybody got the idea that it would be great uh, to give their clients a document that told them how to look after their website. So what I'd really love to explore with you in this episode is uh, how an agency owner can develop a a cracking website owner manual. So first of all, could you just explain the concept to us? Yeah, so I'll, I'll do that with a story that I think we can all relate to. So how many times have you got a new client come in and they already have a website or whatever, and, and you say, okay, could you get me admin access to the website? And they have no idea. <laughs> and you say, oh, well, can you tell me where the website's hosted? Again, they have no idea where it's hosted. Okay, well, where are the DNS records? They have no idea what a DNS record is. So you end up inheriting this website that you're supposed to be working on or rebuilding or whatever it may be, but your client's been completely left on in the dark on how to operate operate any of this website. Like we've all dealt with the customer that comes to us that has an agency who disappeared, right? And that's it's not fun for the customer and it's not fun for the agency that has to take over in that situation. Uh, so the idea here is you empower the client and educate them and give them every, everything they need to take care of their website in the long run, be able to get in access to everything and all that. Uh, know exactly what's required as far as maintenance and upkeep and security and all those details. So they're empowered to do all of these things on their own. Now, I think that's just a good thing to do when you're selling something as powerful as a website and something that's also uh, technical and confusing and most people might not understand right off the bat. Mm -hmm. uh, but it also has some side benefits of if you're the one that's doing this, if you're the one that's providing all this info, uh, you obviously are setting yourself up as an expert. That's one great thing that content does for us. Uh, but you're also letting the client know all the things that are involved in running a website that they might not have thought of in the beginning. So they might not be thinking of things like 
updating plugins or security or uh, running backups or paying for plugin license. Like all of these things might be new concepts to them. And by you introducing all these things to them in a helpful and friendly way and saying, hey, here's how you do all of this. What I think most people realize is, you know what? I don't have time to do this or I don't have expertise or I just don't even want to do this. Can you do this for me? So mm -hmm. that's kind of the the other side of this is it ends up getting you a lot of work that you might have not gotten otherwise. And it's not because you're selling to somebody. It's because you're educating them, which I think is a way better way to build trust and to kind of get that uh, relationship going on, on the right foot. So if someone was to sit down with a blank Google Sheet what sort of elements, I think you've already alluded to a few, but what are the kind of key elements that somebody should include in a, an owner's manual? Yeah, so it's definitely going to depend on the types of websites you're building, right? Sure. So I'm doing almost everything. I'm doing everything in WordPress. So mine are definitely WordPress related. But think of all the roadblocks that somebody would run into. You know, I, I often will use my mom as, as an imaginary character in this. If I handed my mom a website who knows nothing about websites, what would she need to know in order to just keep this thing alive? Uh, so you start going through that mental checklist in your head of like, okay, well, she'd need to know how to log in and how to update content. She'd need to know that all these plugins need to be updated. She'd need to know that we need to have backups of the website in case something goes down. Um, you might even want to include like frequently asked questions. So think about all the questions you get from new clients. Like, um, you know, my emails aren't going through or I updated a plugin and now X doesn't work, you know? So all those questions that, that happen to beginners, people who are, are operating a website for the first time, I would just try to start making a list of all of those things that are included in that and then put that into a document. So when you hand the website over to them, you can hand them this document that answers so many of those questions. I mean, the, it's the same concept of when you go buy a car and you open the glove box and there's a manual inside there that tells you how to change the windshield wipers and uh, you know what kind of battery you need to put in the car and all that. Same kind of deal here, except for a website that just kind of empowers the customer to be able to know what to do with the, the thing that they bought. That's awesome. And you also mentioned um, that story where they didn't know how to log in, they didn't know where their DNS was and everything else like that. Uh, how would you recommend delivering that piece of information? Because I assume the uh, an owner's manual for most of my clients would be the same with a few minor tweaks, but I guess I don't want to necessarily deliver them that kind of uh, more secretive information on the back page of the document. How would you recommend we deliver that data? Right. So that's that's definitely one of the more tricky things about this. But what I've decided on is I want to give them, uh, I, I want to make sure that all those accounts are set up where they have access. So right. through their email or their, their login, uh, whatever that may be. Yeah. And then if nothing else, I can give them the URL of where they would go to find this. So let's say their, their domain registrar is GoDaddy, right? Mm -hmm. We'll say domain registered at GoDaddy and then give them the GoDaddy website address, right? Yeah. Uh, and then we can say, you know, here's the email that was used for the account and here's the link to reset the password. And you can just go to, you know, go to GoDaddy and click the forgot my password link or whatever yeah. and copy and paste that link into the document. So that way you're not giving them the sensitive information, but you're giving them a way that they can access that. If they so need to. I think that's a pretty easy way to do it and still have them be able to get the information they need. Now, some of this, some of this sounds like stuff that you could be talking with your client prior to even building the site and then delivering them a document such as this. So you mentioned things like uh, licenses. Uh, so during the uh, during the discovery, you may say, hey, look, uh, the features you've asked for go beyond WordPress. However, we could install this plugin, this plugin, and this plugin. So you're going to be having some of those conversations. Is it worth delivering the owner's manual in advance as well. So during the early days of negotiating prices saying, hey, look, this is all that's involved, uh, or is this literally something you recommend giving after the fact? You set the expectations at least about licensing in those sales conversations, but this document is something you deliver after the delivery. Actually, this this is one of those things that kind of feels like a secret weapon when I send out a proposal or when I talk to my clients on the first call, sure. uh, you know, prospects on the first call. One is I want to mention all of these things that go into maintaining a WordPress website as early as possible. Nice. Because I made the mistake early in my career of like, I just wanted to make the sale, right? So yeah. whatever I had to do to make the sale and get the, get the job. 
And then once the website was launched, it was like, okay, well, excuse me, but now you're going to have to do all of this work or you're going to have to pay <laughs> me to do all this work forever, you know? And that, that's yeah. obviously a shock that a customer doesn't want to hear for the first time once they think they're done with the project. So for me, it's always important that I want to let them know if, if they've not had a website before, I want to let them know upfront how much work goes into it, what should it, what they should expect going forward and, and those kinds of things from the very beginning. Now, in my proposals, I do include the website owner's manual that I provide them as a deliverable of the project. And mm -hmm. I think this is such a really clever thing to do. Uh, not clever because I thought of it, obviously, but clever because <laughs> if I've you seen say the so results. yourself, <laughs> right, right. If I do say so myself, clever because I've seen the results like anytime you can figure out what are the questions and the worries your clients have and then provide them with some kind of answer before they even have to ask. And that's what this does inside the proposal. So you say, okay, you know, along with, I'm going to deliver you a website and uh, email templates and this and that, whatever's going into your proposal. I'm also going to give you a complete document of all the instructions of everything you need to do going forward, where all your logins are, all that kind of information. So you explain what's included in that manual. That really just eases the mind of prospects. And I can pretty much guarantee that none of the other agencies you're going up against. So if you're doing, you know, bids against other agencies, none of them are included this and what that does is it kind of plants a seed of doubt in your customer's mind about all the other agencies <laughs> if you're providing this document and this training and all this knowledge and those others aren't doing it yeah. even though this isn't like something that they would go out and pay extra money for it's not like you put a, a total of a thousand dollars added to the invoice for this deliverable it adds so much value that they're now worried about the agencies who aren't thinking of all of these things. So I think it's such a huge value add inside of proposals just for that peace of mind that you're giving clients before they even have to ask for it, really. As you're talking, there's a, another use case here as well, uh, or a benefit at least. It's the hit by a bus clause. So clients will often say to me, what happens if you disappear tomorrow? Well, don't worry, we will provide you with an entire manual. You'll have access to absolutely everything. Um, all of our code is uh, accessible to any other developer. WordPress is, because like you, we, we deal with WordPress. WordPress is like 40 or 50% of the internet. I can never keep up with that statistic. But basically, there are a lot of WordPress people out there who will be able to look after you um, directly if you need to edit what we've done code-wise. And equally, you'll be able to do everything else because... Here is your manual, which I think is is a, a phenomenal upsell as well. Yeah, I, I was waiting for the day when uh, that kind of life cycle happened, where somebody uh, somebody who is giving out a website owner's manual as part of their projects ended up getting a website owner's manual from a client. And we had that happen. It's been, I don't know, maybe two years ago now. Oh, cool. <laughs> but uh, an agency inside of our community said, you'll never believe it. Like somebody came to me and they're like, here's here's a document from my last developer. And it had all the information. They're like, it was so great to like oh, start a project with all this information in hand. I'm like, yes, this is, this is exactly it. It's like the entire life cycle happened, which was pretty awesome. Well, that segues perfectly into the next question, which is, do you have any other examples of where the what, uh, the owner's manual that you've created that other people can use um, has had great effects? More than just like this being some kind of document that you hand them, you have to use it strategically. And that's kind of how I've always thought of it as a strategy. So uh, for me, I've wanted to use this in different scenarios. So like I said, in the beginning, I want to talk about maintenance early on in the process. I think that helps a ton of people sell more care plans is when they're open and honest about this up front and they don't drop it on a client after the project's completed. Uh, including this inside of your proposal. Again, I think that's another huge one. And with with the copy we supply, we supply um, pre-written content that you can put inside of your proposal. So when I was explaining earlier that in my proposal, it has information about what they'll get with the website owner's manual, provide that. Obviously, when a client, you, you finish a, a project and maybe they don't take your care plan, well, then we have a script for that. We also have a script for when a client uh, does accept your care plan, you want to go ahead and still provide them with all this information so they know exactly what they're what you're doing for them. Um, and then we thought about some other scenarios where this might be helpful. And this is where I think people have gotten a huge return on this is going back to clients before you had the website owner's manual, before you were providing this kind of document and of saying, you know, okay, here's a list of all the customers that we built websites for that didn't sign up for maintenance. How can we get them to sign up now? You know, maybe it's been a month or maybe it's been a year or maybe it's been five years, right? 
Well, uh, we developed a script that goes in with our copy of the website owner's manual where you can email those past clients and say, hey, here's something that we've been doing uh, you know, since whenever. And what we've seen is clients really appreciate having this. I went back through and retroactively created a copy for all of my past clients, and I wanted to get this in your hands. If you need any help, let me know. And what's great about that is because you're educating them on what needs to be done with the website. A lot of times this is when clients realize like, ooh, I haven't been doing any of these things with, with my website. And you've kind of opened that dialogue again to go back and maybe start that relationship again. So for me, that's huge being able to go back and think about all the clients who might not have taken you up on maintenance to be able to capture a percentage of those is huge. Earlier on, you mentioned wanting to get the sale, therefore just not mentioning maintenance till later. Um, could you give any advice to people who feel a little bit scared to talk about maintenance? Perhaps they just want to get the sale in, like you said. Yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty natural, especially early on, right? When you when you are a little bit more desperate for work, you just want to get somebody to sign up. But it's just such short term thinking, right? Because eventually they're going to, you're going to deliver the website and the maintenance needs to be done. So think through this scenario a little bit. So let's say you finished the website, you never talked about WordPress needing any extra maintenance going forward. And now you say, hey, by the way, you need to update plugins and set up uh, security and there needs to be backups and people need to know this and that and this and that. They're not equipped to do that. And then you say, well, you know, I could do it for you and it's X, X, Y, you know, X amount of dollars per month. They're going to kind of feel like they got swindled. You know, you never mentioned this up front. Obviously, you knew this the whole time, right? But you never mentioned this to us. And now that we're done with the project, you want to, you know, kind of hang it over our head that now we have to pay you a hundred bucks a month or whatever it is. So I don't think that's the best bit of relationship, you know, uh, building you can do with clients. So, the other option would be to not tell them about it at all. But of course, in six months when their website's hacked and they don't have any backups or anything to be able to access the website and fix those problems, whether it was their fault or not that they didn't do all these things, they're going to blame you. They're going to say, well, I just spent you know $10,000 having this website built. Uh, you know, why didn't they take care of this? So I don't think it's a good look either way. So I think when you look at this in the long run, just being as upfront and honest, and really to me, it always comes back down to education. Like the more you can educate a client, I think some people are afraid you're giving away the keys to the kingdom, but most people don't want to do this work. You and I want to do this work. Most people who running another business don't want to do this work. What you're doing by educating them is proving that you know what you're doing. So that just builds so much trust with them that I think in the long run, it's just a much safer bet than trying to skirt around the edges, you know? And also, I guess there's two points here. Number one, quick story from me. I actually ended up refunding an entire web project because I didn't have this conversation. Things hit the fan about a year later. So I was thinking, it's been over a year now, but they threatened legal action on me because I had not given any of this information. I'd just gone ahead, built the website and let them go because I didn't particularly like them. Didn't wasn't a great working relationship. And you know, I just thought I could let them go, but they came back on me like a ton of bricks. So I'd avoided that from the get-go because I had that fear of um, losing the sale or the fear of confrontation or whatever else was bumbling around at the time when I was having that early conversation with them. Um, and really it was just delaying the inevitable because what came back was 10 times worse than that slight uncomfortable feeling you might get when you say, yes, the website costs this, but there are also other costs that you will continually have to pay for the if you want to maintain this, or at least work you'll have to do if you wish to maintain this. It also just reminds me literally of a time where I had just assumed, I mean, this is in the, this is in the late nineties, one of my very first sites. Um, they didn't understand they had to buy hosting. And when the year came around and I invoiced them for hosting again, <laughs> they got really, really mad. Now, we all think that's obvious. Um, back in the 90s, it probably wasn't that obvious. But to me, it was totally obvious. And that's another instance of where I just completely had not educated my clients whatsoever because I just made massive assumptions. Yeah. And I mean, going back to that first story there, even it, I've had those clients too, where like, I thought it was going to be a great project. Then it turns out going through the project, these clients aren't a great fit for me for whatever reason. And sometimes that's because the client's crazy or sometimes it's because you just don't mesh well. <laughs> yeah. You can always still educate them on everything that needs to take yeah. place. The website owner's manual, 
will give them a good starting point if they want to do it themselves. And if not, you can recommend them to somebody else. Just because somebody's a bad client for you doesn't mean they're a bad client in general. So there's always people you can reach out to and and refer that work on. Just making sure that people know what's required in order to keep their website up and running because you definitely don't want you know the story you you described a year later to get some threats from a from a past client and especially a client that you didn't really like in the first place so that you definitely don't want that and then refunding that suck now folks uh let me just prove that education does work because during this podcast you have heard reasons why you should develop a owner's manual for the websites that you deliver to your clients uh, you've also heard some of the things that you could include and the benefits etc and i guarantee you right now that you're thinking i don't have time for that well you can actually go ahead and purchase that because you have been educated you can at least go and purchase it from the admin bar there will be a link in the description this is not an affiliate i'm just promoting this because i think it's awesome and so is kyle and you can buy that and repurpose it for yourself in a fraction of the time so if you're thinking like that then i guarantee your client when reading the website owner's manual will definitely be thinking we don't have time to update this website we need to commission you so mate thank you so much for spending some time with us what other plans have you got in the near future for admin bar well, I'm, I don't know what date this will come out, but we're getting really close to WordCamp US here in the States, uh, here in about a month from when we're recording this. And we have a big group of people. I think last count, there was like 70 folks from wow. our community who are going to be at WordCamp US. So I'm really looking forward to getting all those people together. Um, and some new uh, exciting things coming inside the admin bar as far as some products and stuff I'm developing right now that I'm really excited about. But mostly it's just you know, continuing to help everybody, you know, uh, stay in the game, right? Mm -hmm. we, you need, you need a little bit of support and, and in different ways at different times, right? So sometimes it's, you need to come in and, and gripe about clients, which we definitely do a little bit inside the admin bar. And yeah. sometimes it's, you know, GA4 is coming down and we all need to know what to do. Having a community of folks uh, like that together to be able to help and support one another is huge. And we just want to continue providing that service to everybody who wants to be involved. And folks, if you just literally thought he meant GTA 5 just then, no, GA4 is something to do with Google, which I just totally glossed over the other day when they kept spamming me and asked one of my colleagues to deal with it. <laughs> That's yeah, the I analytics, isn't it? it. Uh, yeah, the minute I saw that and read everything, I just cried a little inside and, and handed it off. It's somebody else's problem. So folks, if you want to go find out more, check out adminbar.com. Check out the links in the description as well for the website owner's manual for the Facebook group. And Kyle, are there any other ways that people can connect with you before we say goodbye? Well, I would say Twitter, but I don't know what's going to happen to Twitter in the next few days. So I would yeah. say the Facebook group is the best way. Or you can always reach me at kyle at theadminbar.com if you want to just go old school with email. Nice. Mate, thanks so much for your time. I hope we can have you on again soon so that you can beat Pete Everett's record. <laughs> anything to beat pete i'll yeah, sign up man. we can record another all one right. right now all right back to back let's do it <laughs> take care buddy see you later bye